time now for Perspective, and our guest today studied law and was set to be a lawyer, but instead became a stand-up comedian. Mikael Sengazi is now well-known in his home country, Burundi. He's the fifth in a family of seven kids, born to a Burundian father and a Rwandan mother. Family is one of his favorite subjects, along with taboo topics like sex. He's written at least four one-man shows, founded several regional comedy events, and is performing here in Paris this weekend as part of the festival Afri Capital. We're excited to welcome him on set, uh, Mikael Singazi. Thank you so much for being here. You're very good. <laughs> Thank I you. I was listening to you. I was like, are you talking about me like that? that right. Was you're really... good. You're very impressive. Yeah, and <laughs> so are you in your job. My God, that was good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We learned to talk fast. Yeah. We learned to talk fast. Um, I want to start at the beginning, if that's yes. okay with you. Can you just tell me a bit about your path to becoming a comedian? I was meant to be a lawyer. And it didn't work out. So, no, it did. It did. <laughs> I actually have my degree. But then uh, I started just, you know, going to theater shows. And, and one lady spotted me. Her name is Carole Caremira. And she has, like, uh, this cultural center, uh, Isho Art Center. And she was like, oh, I like this guy. Uh, would you mind trying some things out? I was like, bet. So I went there and I never stopped. And I started Comedy Nights, which was the first comedy group in Rwanda. And that was back in 2010. And from then on, I never stopped. And what did your family make of that decision? Well, you understand that it's a tricky subject. My dad was like, so uh, all the money I paid eh, is just for jokes. So for you, it's jokes. My money that I pay, it jokes. <laughs> You're supposed to be a lawyer. So it was a bit tricky at the beginning, but then they saw that there was like a clear mission behind that, that I um, had a purpose, that I wanted to do it. So they were like, you know, let, me, let us, you know, let him pass a little bit, just like a little bit of time and see what's going on. And then at some point when my dad saw me on TV, he was like, mm, maybe he's not that dumb. So yeah, so yeah, it, at first it was complicated, but now they're the best and they support me every time. Yeah. All right, yeah, you won over the toughest audience, perhaps, your own parents. Yes. Uh, speaking of that mission, you've said that one of your first and most memorable performances was in Kinshasa in Democratic Republic of Congo, a country that does have some tension with Rwanda. Can you talk a little bit about that experience and what it meant to you? Uh, it was it was special to me because uh, I'm just an artist, you know. I didn't even know about it, so I got there uh, with my friend Kimeni Hervé, who's a great comedian, by the way. Uh, so I got there, and I'm starting to perform. And, you know, uh, part of the audience, not all of the audience, of course, part of the audience were just telling me to, like, you know, you, know, you need to go back to where you're coming from in Swahili. Uh, and then they were telling me, go back to Rwanda, go back to Rwanda. And then I kept on performing. And then at some point, uh, I talked about the fact that I also come from Burundi and then they just removed Rwanda and they <laughs> Burundi and they're like go back to Burundi you know and after that they started listening which meant I was actually doing a good job and then they were the ones encouraging me which showed me that uh, arts is something that is important and it can unite people despite the differences that we can have uh, political or not you know we can get together and laugh about different things and you know grow together and move forward together, yeah. And I know that your jokes mostly center around your family and also yes. the taboo topic uh, yes. of sex. Are there yes. any topics that you consider off limits? Uh, I don't joke about, um, I, I would say about the genocide. I would say about the genocide and rightfully so and understandably so. Uh, I don't think it's a joking matter for me, but other than that, I can do it. Everything else is fine. And in terms of other comedians, too, that's somewhat of a debate sometimes in the comedy world. Should any subjects be off limits? And you think, you know, yeah, sometimes I, they should I be. think, I mean, it, it's not only uh, how you say it, it's also what you say and the intentions behind. You have to be very, very careful about it because you might hurt some people and it has happened multiple times. And uh, I'd rather not go in that direction for me. And that, that's just me. Uh, some other comedians might feel like they can if they can well. Go ahead and do it. It's, you know, your life, your choices. But I prefer not to do that. Yeah. I think that's an admirable position. Yeah. Um, what's the stand-up comedy scene like in Burundi and in the surrounding region? Is, is it a career that people are starting to kind of understand a little bit more? It's a career that is start to understand a little bit more, uh, especially in our region. Uh, in Kampala, there's already like a lot of comedy clubs. I have great friends in Kampala and in Kenya. Uh, in Rwanda, it's not... It's not that developed compared to other countries in the region. Uh, also in Burundi, same. But uh, we're getting there. We're getting there slowly, slowly. 
And stand-up comedy can be somewhat of a boys' club in a lot of countries. I'm curious yeah. if you know a lot of female comedians and if there are any that maybe you want to give a shout-out to. Uh, um, in Rwanda and Burundi? Uh, yeah, no. Well, yeah, the thing is, um, there are not that many, not because they don't want to or anything like that. It's just, I would say, it's it has to do with uh, our culture, you know, our culture. And uh, you when you go in front of the people and then you speak... Uh, in our culture, the man is supposed to be the one that is speaking in front of the audience. That's how it used to be back then. It doesn't mean that they can't, but it just means that it takes a lot more convincing to do so for stand-up comedy. But we have great artists, female artists that are, be, that are singers, that are writers, that are uh, performers in uh, theater and movies. So, yeah. yeah do you think those. maybe stand-up comedians too, women? could get into that they could they definitely could you know like uh, we have uh, in uganda we have like uh Anne Kansime who's doing like a great job and she has like millions and millions of views and she's she's really known in our region and she's doing a killing so yeah uh, i think it's it's a it's a point of view that we need uh, in any society because i can talk about subjects as a man but you definitely need a point of view of a woman some things that i can't talk about that you would be probably no more that you probably know more and would maybe do better jokes than i would and you are performing in paris this weekend is yes. performing in europe different from performing uh, in african countries in the region where you're from yes it is it is how definitely is it different is. uh because um cultures are different so we don't laugh about the same things the same way so sometimes when you're performing and you're like this joke is going to work i know it i've done it countless times i know it and then you do it and then it doesn't and then you you just continue and when you continue and then they laugh at a spot when you're not expecting you're like but this is not funny so so it's basically a difference of cultures so you have to like a little bit get to know what works and how to adapt your your skit and your sketch and your one-man show to that specific audience even though the title of the show that i have here is in english uh it is in french but I also have a version in English. So. And and I know you, I think you perform um, in Kurundi as well. I'm curious, do you, as someone who's trilingual, feel like yeah. you're funnier in any one of those languages? Uh, I think, I think French is good for me. French is good. English, and I, I can't say specifically which one, but I would, I would maybe start with French. French is, I'm comfortable in French, then Kurundi, then English. Right, well, I have to say your English was pretty great today, so you can reconsider thank that. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there. Mikael Singazi, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, good luck for your show. Uh, again, a reminder that stand-up comedian Mikael Singazi, for any French-speaking viewers here in Paris, he is performing this Sunday as part of the Festival Africapital. Uh, do check it out if you can.